Hi class, uh, Mrs. Johnson here again, and just going to review the final component here of our exponent rules unit. So um, one thing that I would have done with you if we were in the classroom was provide this graphic organizer to you when we were all done with um, each one of the individual rules. And this is a really nice component to put all of the rules together that we have covered so far. So for those of you that maybe have missed an assignment or two here or there, this is a great place to pick up and um, review each one of these rules and hopefully catch on to what we are doing as we are going to continue uh, talking more about exponents next week. So the very first part here where it says adding and subtracting monomials, the rule here states that the only thing we're allowed to do is this key phrase, combined like terms. And when we do that, we are not changing any variables or exponents. The variables and exponents are going to stay the same. Now for the product rule, in that situation, when we multiply exponents or um, coefficients, we will actually add the exponents. So as long as they have the same base, we are going to add the exponents together. For the power rule, when you have an exponent raised to another exponent, or power to a power as we would like to refer to it as, we are actually going to multiply these two little exponents here. For something such as the quotient rule, when we divide, we are going to subtract the exponents. The negative exponent rule, something new this week, if you have a negative exponent in your initial problem, in order to write your final answer, we have to remove it. And to do that, we will turn this into a fraction. We will move the base along with the exponent to the bottom of the fraction, and when we do that, the exponent will turn positive. The last rule here, and something we've mentioned throughout but haven't covered in a separate lesson, is if you have something raised to the zero power, any number, any variable raised to the zero power is equal to one. If you use a calculator, try and type that in, you will notice that you get an answer of one whenever you raise something to the zero power. Now, something I would recommend doing right here is pause the video and go through the example column on your own. Go through and try and simplify each one of these questions. There are 12 altogether, two examples for each rule, and then restart the video and double check that you were able to simplify these correctly. So as I go over the examples, if you look at number one, the exponents and variables match, so we just subtract the coefficients. 9 minus 10 is negative 1, and the variables remain the same. Now in number two, when we are talking in a statement form, be careful of the order for subtraction. It says subtract 6w from 8w. So the 8w will come first, and the 6w will come after that. 8w minus 6w is 2w. Now the product rule examples, when you're adding, add 2 plus 6, that gives you h to the 8th power. Now if there's a coefficient involved, you will actually multiply the coefficients, so we'll take negative 2 times 7, that would give us negative 14, and we will add the exponents. So 2 plus 3 would give us a to the 5th, and 1 plus 1 would give us b to the 2nd power. In number 1, for the power rule, 2 times 3, we multiply those exponents, so that yields x to the 6th power. In number 2, you have a two-step problem. We're going to take negative 2 to the second power. That's negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. We will also multiply the 5 and 2 together to get 10. However, there is still m to the third as a part of your answer here. So in order to complete the problem, we now have to apply the product rule from above and add the exponents to get 4m 
to the 13th power. Now, our quotient rule, as we are dividing, again, I keep encouraging you, if you have not already, download that TI-84 on your Chromebook. 27 over 42 will reduce. They are both divisible by 3. So the fraction becomes 9 over 14. And you will subtract the exponents. So 5 minus 1 would equal x to the 4th. In number 2, we have a power rule on the top of the fraction. So multiply 2 times 2, you'll get y to the 4th divided by y to the 4th. When you subtract 4 and 4, you will get 0. So anything raised to that 0 power is equal to 1. Now the negative exponent rule, you do not change the location of the coefficients. So negative 5 is going to stay on the top, but the negative exponent has to turn positive, so we move that to the bottom of our fraction and make the 2 positive. In number 2, 4 over 8, again, is a fraction. It would reduce to 1 half. And as I subtract 2 and 5, I will get k to the negative third. In order to eliminate that negative exponent, move it to the bottom of the fraction with the 2 and make the 3 positive. For the last set, um, you have your zero exponent rule. So we know we have x to the zero power that will turn into one. However, there's a seven that's being multiplied by that one. So your final answer here would equal seven. Last but not least in number two, multiply four and two to get eight. And use that quotient rule, which tells us to subtract. Eight minus eight is zero and anything raised to the zero power equals one. This again is a great sheet to refer back to, whether you can save it, whether you want to print it, it has all of the rules in one place, and it will be very helpful for us next week as we tie all of this together and review each one of the exponent rules and get ready for an assessment on exponents next week. If you have questions, again, please email and reach out to me via Google Meet um, or send me a private email and I can set up a Meet session with you if it's something that you think might be helpful. Good luck. Enjoy your weekends.